Before we go into pulling the bushings out and swapping the plates, let me go through the, the fundamental differences between the two connection systems. I guess the first thing I'll point out, um, what you'll notice here, this is a 1971 Hoyt metal riser. And it has a very similar connection system to the, to the DOS connection system. This is the original, uh, this is the original system that came with Hoyt. And you can see that David Souza borrowed from this design into his own. When David came out with this, ILF was already uh, very popular and mainstream. There weren't many hunting bows, mind you, at that time when David came out with DOS, but ILF was already out and that's the international limb fitting. And it's ironic, but um, because they say it's international, but there's a lot of variation from ILF to ILF. Um, and also when, in the beginning, they're, they're relatively tight, but I'll, I'll go through the fundamental differences that you can see here just by looking at them. ILF system has a dovetail slot here and it has an, a detent. That detent fits, it locks in. There's a spring behind this that pushes this into that little detent and it locks into place. And that places your limb uh, securely in, into the, in, in fully seated into that position and up against the tiller bolt. As you seat that, you always want to make sure that the tiller bolt is bottomed out here. There are variances and things happen where these will need to be cleared out a little bit from time to time. I, I really don't consider that a defect. If this needs a little bit of cl clearing out, I'll, I'll do it. It's not that big of a deal. But um, you'll always want to make sure that this is seated in the detent. And uh, you can do that by just glancing into the limb after you place it there and ensuring that that tiller bolt is backed all the way out. After it's there, pull your string back about three inches and let it go. And that'll seat the limb and it'll be safely in place. You'll never have to worry about it popping out. But as this sits now in the ILF connection system, this bushing rides directly into this dovetail. So it's metal on metal. And then, of course, the limb is supported by the same tiller bolt in both systems. The fundamental difference is the DIS has a, uh, has a male screw here with a thumb screw on the back side. And it has this bushing that goes through your limb. And it faces that screw and you would be screwing it from the thumb screw on the other side, and it pulls your limb butt down. Sorry about that. It pulls your limb butt down right into this rubber pad. And this is a dense rubber pad versus metal. That's um, why I prefer the DOS system for, for hunting, just strictly for this, this reason. Outside of those differences, they're really uh, close to one another. The tiller bolts are, are identical. Um, one difference is you do have LLA with the ILF system, and you don't have LLA with a DAS plate. I think it can get confusing for people because the term DAS, it refers to a connection system and also a brand. So you can have ILF with a DAS riser, or you can have a DAS connection system with a DAS riser. You can do both. Uh, it doesn't just refer to the connection system itself. And these are in fact two um, DOS HT21 side by side, one in ILF that doesn't belong to me. It's on loan to me for the clinic. Um, from Three Rivers, and this is my personal riser with the DAS connection system. But those are the fund fundamental differences between the two. Let's go through the pros and cons of each system before I start swapping them out. By far, the biggest pro to the ILF connection system is the convenience. All the limbs that you buy are, except for limbs that are, are marked at Three Rivers, are going to be are going to have an ILF bushing in them, and it's just extremely convenient to buy different limbs, pop them in and out, and not have to worry about uh, swapping bushings. And a lot of people, uh, including myself, the first time I did it, it's scary to grab a thousand dollar pair of limbs and beat a bushing out of them. Uh, after you do it a few times, it's, it's no big deal and you get really used to it. And we'll go through that today, but it is extremely convenient just to have an ILF and be able to exchange limbs in and out. Uh, the other pro to the ILF system, this is debatable. I'll give you both sides of the debate, but it's the lateral limb adjustment, the lateral limb adjustment, the, the screws you see here on the side, and that moves this dovetail from left to right. And uh, this allows you, if you have crooked limbs, to get them straight. Um, a lot of people see this as a pro. If I was target archer only, I would definitely only use ILF, and I would be uh, I would be concerned with getting this dialed in every time. Um, for me personally, I see it as a con because these do move, and the majority of risers that I've purchased use, and I mean the vast majority of risers that I've purchased use, that have lateral limb adjustment, they're off. The dovetails are off. Whenever I go to clinics or I go to shoots, I often pick up people's bow and I'm measuring them. And what I'm doing is I'm checking to see if they're in tune without picking, without shooting them, obviously. But I look for lateral limb alignment. I look for the center shot being correct and a few other things, uh, tiller. But lateral limb alignment is, is obviously, is, is uh, honestly out of alignment a lot. 
And uh, I, I'm surprised by that, but I do find that the lateral limb alignment's out quite a bit. And uh, it's, it's not hard to correct. I'll put a video up on it later, but it's just something that can go wrong. And if you eliminate it, it, it can't go wrong. So it's just one less thing I have to worry about. One less uh, pair of threads that I have to put Loctite on. Um, I'm of the opinion, if you buy reputable limbs, I, I bought these. These are the Hoyts I'm going to be hunting with this year. I'm going to be hunting with the Moax as well from Backwoods Composites. If you buy from a reputable limb and a reputable retailer, if you put it on your riser and it's crooked, I wouldn't use lateral limb alignment. I'm sending it back for a straight set of limbs. I, I didn't give them crooked money. So I, I expect good limbs for good money. And I think crooked limbs are a defect. If you're buying a lot of used limbs, maybe you want to do that because uh, you, you may find some used uh, limbs that, that are crooked and they're, you're kind of stuck with them. And all of the testing that I've done, I've only had one set of limbs that were crooked and they were very crooked and they caused some problems. But um, and I, I sent them back, obviously. But uh, for the most part, I, I don't see any issues with limb alignment being an issue. Most of the limbs in terms of ILF that I purchase are new. If I were purchasing used all the time, uh, you could make an argument either way. But nevertheless, it could be considered overall uh, a, a pro to have lateral limb adjustment because it's just one more thing you can adjust. It's just depending on how you look at it. And obviously the convenience. The other pro, if you're talking about a, a DOS riser, and this is a DOS HT21, and this isn't always the case with every ILF riser, but the ILF pads on the DOS riser are heavier than the stock um, DAS pads. These are these are very, very light and these are much heavier. And there's an advantage to having weight out on the end of your riser. If you go watch the video uh, behind the bow with Backwoods Composites, he really goes into the physics. I'll put a link up where you can see that, but he goes into the physics of the bow and you'll understand why having it on the on the outer edges benefits. Uh, you do have an opportunity to buy stainless steel aftermarket DOS pads from Three Rivers, but they're a little bit more expensive. But right out of the box, you get an ILF uh, connection system that's convenient. You get lateral limb adjustment, and it gives you a little bit of extra weight in the case of the DAS riser itself. I think uh, Jim Belcher played a hand in designing this uh, specific ILF system here, and it's proven to be very reliable. Uh, this is the choice for certain of the majority. Uh, I'm probably in the minority in that I, I like um, DAS connection systems much better, but I'll walk you through why I prefer them. Uh, the main reason, I, I stated already, it's this, this uh, rubber pad that's here. It absorbs vibration. Uh, that's the biggest. And vibration's a big deal. And it also, it will make it a little bit quieter, but it's much easier to get quieter. I, I talked about this earlier. Uh, I can get an ILF tuned before everyone uh, sends me a lot of hate comments. You can get an ILF tuned very, very quiet. It just takes more work to get it tuned. Uh, the DAS connection system gets quiet really fast. And if your tiller's just a little bit out, for example, you're running a fixed crawl or something like that, or your knock height has to be a little bit higher than normal to get clearance, that DOS rubber pad really does cover up a little bit of that uh, vibration and noise for you. And um, so I just prefer it. The con to the D DAS is you don't have the convenience. You are going to have to learn how to swap out these bushings, and you're going to have to take a hammer to uh, and a punch to some limbs. Um, I'm over that. I've done it so many times. It's not that big of a deal. It certainly was in the beginning. The real big con for me now that I tell everybody about is this rubber pad. This rubber pad can come off. Let's see if I can get a, get a better view of it here. The big con that I was referring to, this rubber pad can come off. It's just glued in place on top of this, um, this DAS plate. And eventually that'll start to peel off and come up. And as you put pressure down on this, you'll see it curl whenever it's, uh, whenever your limb's in place. That's obviously a con because that's something uh, you have to mess with or pay attention to out in the field. I always carry um, extras. I don't carry with carry them with me in the field, but I have extras usually in a box somewhere or at camp or here at the house. And if I, if I see one coming up, I can always glue it back down, but it, it's it would be a it'd be an injustice not to bring it up because it's something you do have to worry about. So whereas I cry about the LLA, there's really just as much issues with having to manage this uh, this rubber pad. For me, the pros outweigh the cons in having the rubber pad there um, for the vibration and the sound. I just uh, I really like it. I guess one more uh, slight pro would be, and it I guess it is worth mentioning. It's not the end of the world, but uh, whenever you unstring your bow, your limbs don't fall off, and uh, that that can be really nice. 
whenever you're uh, traveling or, you know, unstringing your bow and, and messing with it. But uh, I it certainly wouldn't be a deal breaker in my decision back and forth. Bottom line, if you want convenience, ILF is the way to go. If you really want to dial in your sound, um, there is there is a benefit to, to DAS. And it's important to remember, because I think it's confusing, you can go with a DAS riser and you have an option of ILF or DAS. You're not stuck with one or the other. But uh, those are the fundamental pros and cons of, of each connect connection system. There's one more there's one more pro in the DOS connection system that I want to point out, and it's it's the slot that the screw runs in. If you can see this, there's a slot cut out that gives you this play. That is very 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 important. I kind of made a comment earlier that there's there's nothing standard about the the ILF connection system itself. It's it's kind of a it's ironic to me that they created this entire connection system for a standard and then there's there's no real standard on it. There's actually a lot of variances. You'll find those variances to be uh, in the space between here and here and um, and also the limb butt thickness. There's some really thick limb butts and there's some really skinny ones. And one advantage that I find with this, uh, this DOS plate itself is that that allows you to take care of those variances and you, you don't really have a lot of fit issues, especially in the late model um, DOS risers. The early model DAS risers didn't have this cutout that you see here and there were some fit issues. Uh, they, they, they resolved that issue about two or three years ago. So now between that cutout and this slot allowing you to, to make this have this much variance and, and grab that limb and pull it down really helps take care of any variances you may see from manufacturer to manufacturer in terms of build. And I, I do think that's a benefit worth mentioning. All right, I'll walk you through the differences between and we'll open up one of these ILF bushings. Uh, the DOS connection system is very si simple in terms of the bushing. There's a short bushing and a longer bushing. Uh, one is for border and one is for all other limbs. Um, I probably have, you know, five, six, seven, eight dozen sets of these around. And um, but for, for the most part, I'm usually running the, the longer the longer bushing. But the standard bushing takes care of everything other than border. And then you have ILF. And the ILF um, bushings actually come in a lot of different variances. I have a lot of Uka here. I can tell by this, this is a win and win. Win and win has these grooves in it, another Uka. So this came out of the MOAC, that's an Uka, and that's a win and win. Win and win is easy to identify because it has this grooves. And it's actually one of the tighter bushings that you'll find whenever you're pushing them out. The Uka bushings actually just fall right out. I've never swapped out bushings and I've swapped out a lot of bushings on, on Uka. They just usually they just fall out or they just require a slight push. They don't require a hammer tap at all. And that's typically what their bushing looks like. This uh, bushing came from when and when I've got a magnet under the table, which is grabbing onto these. And it's, you'll find out why when we start, when we open this up, this little spring has the magical ability to, if it falls off your work table, it's gone. It's just gone. It's just, it just defies everything we know about time and space. So you want to make sure you have a magnet to place that on or you will, you will definitely lose it. Um, but this came with a MOAX, pretty standard. Um, this is your UCA. I'll open these up so you can kind of see what you're dealing with here. The other thing I want to point out, if you look at these as, as ILF guys, you want to check these. And a lot of people really don't run a, a wrench on here and tighten these. You want to make sure these are tight. This is the only thing holding your limb down. Are these few threads, whenever you open these things up and you actually see what's inside of here, there's not a lot of hardware here holding all of that pressure together. There's the spring that came out, and it'll be deep. Uh, I may have already pulled the D10 out of here. But if you can see that, there's only just what? What's the thread count there? One, two, three. There's four threads that's holding all of that pressure. And, and I have actually picked up guys' limbs before and checked these, and they'll be loose. You always want to keep these uh, snug on your limb and secure. And again, whenever you're taking these apart, uh, oh, there's the D10. It'll come. It's just not coming out of there. For some reason, it's not on this one. Whenever you're taking these apart, you'll always want to keep track of that uh, that spring. Let me take this this one apart, and you can see the. I'll be able to get the D10 out of there. Usually, this stuff comes flying out. Now it's not wanting to cooperate. There's your spring, and there's your little detent that you have to keep track of. Um, very easy to lose these things, but um, that's that's what it looks like as it comes out. Again, when and when will have these grooves in it. The Uka is very smooth. And um, these are these are very smooth, but that's all there is to it. And whenever you put it back in, you put it back in a little bit of 
a little bit of common sense. And you want to put it with the, de the detent, that little center piece down. And you'll put the spring back in there that pushes it forward. And you'll just lock it in place. And you'll want to make sure, of course, that it's tight. And that's the most important part. Make sure that it's tight and that you're leveraging every one of these threads. Because as you can see on the UCA models, there's not very many threads there. It's another reason why I kind of like the DOS. You've got a shelf that this sits on. And it just, for me, it feels a little bit more secure. But those are the inner workings of the bushings themselves. And in time, you'll have, you know, tons of these things laying around and, and you'll find, you know, a year later, you'll find your springs that you couldn't find the day before you were trying to go hunting. But you'll gather a collection of them if you're like me and you'll always have some spare parts laying around. It's pretty simple to, to kind of interchange the guts and get them, get them working if you have the pieces that you need. One important thing as we start moving forward, you do not want to use pliers on this side of the bushing. If you mar this up, it is going to create problems for you. So you'll never see me use pliers. You'll always see me use the punch on the face of the bushing. And as we go through this, five sixteenths is very, very important. Like don't, don't cheap it out. Don't just try to make it work. Don't hit it with an Allen wrench. Go get a punch that's flush, that sits five sixteenths flush on this bushing. So you're not gouging into the inner workings of the bushing or dragging on the inside of the limb. You want to get it square on the face of that and you'll want to punch that out and you won't have any problems. All right, let's get into how we, uh, we, I'm laughing because literally as I, as I paused to, to get this set up, to take this off, Dean from uh, production manager for three others, three rivers sent me a warning. You like, tell them if in doubt, send the riser in and they'll replace these for you. And, and it's, it's impeccable timing that he sent that just as I was getting ready to hit record. Cause you can see I had the Allen wrench in here to do this. And that, that is important to bring up. If you're not comfortable wrenching on your bow, I, I have become very comfortable just pounding on these things because uh, I, I test them all the time. If you're not, Three Rivers will swap these out for you, and uh, you don't have to worry about stripping them out. There are some of the older risers that don't have a stainless steel collar in here. It's it's literally going to be aluminum, and they're very, very easy to strip out. The HD21 has a stainless steel bushing in there, and, and I'm not sure if all of the new DOS risers will or not, but again, a little bit of you know, um, brains in your head and feet in your shoes, and you can do this safely without damaging something. But if you're not comfortable with that, ship it back to them, ask them to swap it out and you can do it. I, I swap these out all of the time. Um, the other, and I literally just receive another text here. The other thing uh, that I wanna point out is there is a there is a torque setting on this. From the stainless steel bolt, it's 22 pounds. And for the hex, it's 10 pounds. So you will have to have a torque wrench on you unless you do that stuff instinctively. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give you an example of, I've got my personal DOS riser all tuned, so I don't want to move those things around. I literally have that thing dialed in right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to spend most of my time on this, uh, this riser from Three Rivers. That's their demo bow, and they let me borrow. But you just simply want to remove this, this, this bolt that's in this place right here. And this is the stainless steel bolt that he was referring to for, with the little half 22 pounds. And you can see what that, how much force that required to pop loose. And as you pop that loose, back it out. Very, very, very simple. We'll have some um, pops right out. You'll see this little slot right here that that rides in to make sure that you're centered. And it's really, it's really kind of bulletproof. It's really hard to screw that up. Um, the one way that you can hose this up, if this were the, here I have a DOS plate, uh, two of the stock DOS plates that are aluminum because I have the stainless steel ones that are heavier on mine. But if you look at these, uh, one has a rubber pad and one does not. If you're replacing that rubber pad, let's say it's on this riser, for example, I'll just slip this in. So you've got, you've got this screw seated and I need to place some adhesive here in order to place a rubber pad on there and let it obviously set up. You do not want to get adhesive on the face of this on the face of this screw. If this were flush here and you get adhesive on here, it makes it very, very, very difficult to get off. So you want to be very careful about that as you're replacing these rubber pads. Outside of that, it's a really, really simple task. And as you can see, both the DOS and the ILF just slip right into place with that locator. And there's a stainless steel bushing in the new riser, so you don't have to really worry about stripping it out. But you do want to hit your torque settings and uh, put them back in place. But it's really that simple, just to pull that ILF off and put the DOS pad in, and you'll use the exact, I, I use the exact same stainless steel screw, put it back in, lock it in place, 22 pounds, and I'm done. Uh, you do use blue Loctite whenever you do this. If I'm testing, like on my bow, 
that I run in Trad Lab, I don't Loctite everything down, obviously, because I'm, I'm literally pulling these things on and off constantly. But if it's my hunting bow, there's going to be blue Loctite put on that, and I am going to put it down for the torque value and, and let it let it cure up. And, you know, you're back to bulletproof. But it's as simple as swapping out your plates, and you can go back and forth whenever you like. All right. As I get this tightened back down by hand, you'll see me get this snug, obviously. And then I don't ignore torque settings. I have a, uh, I have a torque wrench that I used to use for uh, scope rings and bases, and I just convert those, those settings into what I need for the DOS. If you remember, it's 22 pounds for the stainless steel, and you do want to hit those torque settings. I can get pretty close by feel, and it's also important, I guess, for the, for the nerds in the room. You have to have a good fit. If you have a sloppy fit, your torque, your torque settings will not, be, will not be right. But I always finish it off with a torque wrench. Uh, you want to try to, I guess also since we're covering uh, the important stuff for, for the bedwetters out there, you probably should have safety glasses for this. I forgot to bring that up in the first part. I don't want someone to try to sue me. But it's really just as simple as that. It only takes me a matter of minutes. I've done it quite a bit. You're just pulling out this one bolt, and you're managing the torque settings, and you get it right back in place. You do have to manage your LLA. It will lock back into the same spot, but you will have to manage your LLA. And you'll want to check your, your limb alignment every time you change these. The bottom, the bottom pockets, just like the top pocket. Uh, again, I swap these out all the time because I'm always testing with aluminum versus the stainless steel and moving my weight around and shifting the balance of my riser. So I'm very, very familiar with, with, uh, with doing this. And it's really not a, not a big issue at all. Let's move over to the uh, limb bushings now and we'll get to the fun part. What we're shooting for here is a limb that'll look just like this when we're done. We want to remove the ILF bushing so that we can slide that DAS bushing in place and, 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 and convert it. Or obviously the, the opposite. It's as simple as pushing it in on this one. It doesn't require much force at all, as you can see. But uh, getting that bushing out is what scares the heck out of everybody. And I think it kind of keeps people from trying uh, the DOS connection system, which, you know, it may be worth uh, tinkering with it a bit. Uh, you will need a uh, piece of wood that's hollowed out. I, uh, I actually had to go drill this really quick because uh, I usually, the end of my workbench has a section in it where there's some holes where I can just move it over and bang these things out and it actually catches them. But literally half inch and you bore it out a little bit to make sure that the bushing, the ILF bushing can slip down in there as you tap it out is all you really need. Um, you do want a hard surface for those of you that uh, haven't ever messed with this stuff. You want a surface that doesn't give. You don't want to be doing this on a soft surface because it will actually allow you to move that bushing a lot easier. But in this case, I picked up these white medium limbs in case I want to hunt with a, a kind of a traditional curve versus the more aggressive Moat curve. So I'll be able to go back both. And I got an American made bow, uh, both in riser and limb that I can play with. But uh, the first thing I need to do is swap this out, and we'll take these limbs, and we'll do it hopefully without any problems. The first thing I do is um, take that top cap off so I can get that detent. It's a very simple task for simple people. That magnet, you, I fight on a regular basis, but trust me, it's better than crawling. Right there, it captured my spring, and there's my, my detent pin. Um, and you can see the bushing is, is captured inside the limb. It's a little bit blurry. I'll give it a chance to focus. But with that captured inside the limb, that's what kind of scares everybody and kind of keeps them from trying this. But we'll, we'll get it out really fast here. I've got my block of wood. And you just want to place your, your bushing so it's in that hole. And remember, you want to get this punch. And this punch, as you can see, fits right on top of that bushing. I'm not using, I've, I've heard of people using Allen wrenches and things of that nature. Take the time to go get the right punch so that it's, it's supporting, it's fully supported around that bushing. And it should just take a few taps. Right there it goes. And you can see it's popped out and it's now free. And there's, there's no damage. It's really easy to do. And it's, uh, it's really not a, a complex task. I'll pop this off the other side. And there's our bushing. Uh, the smart thing to do is to quickly put this back together before that spring disappears. Somewhere in time and space, there are 4,000 ILF springs, and they all belong to me. Let's see. All right, I've got that secured. goes back in the pile. And here I have the DOS bushing that I'm just going to place into this 
into this 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 hole here. There's uh, some limbs, especially way back in the day, would require some some reaming out. But um, I haven't I haven't encountered that lately. You can see that slips right in with zero force. It literally drops right in. If it drops right in like this one does, I'll put it on there to test and tune. I don't have any real problem with that. And this doesn't have any real play in it. But if it has play and you can feel wobble. You've got problems on your hand, and that's actually a little bit looser than I would want. I'll go get a piece of um, like Teflon tape and wrap around there, and I'll get some epoxy, and I'll set that in place. I like to put the epoxy um, not just around here, but also on this shelf, if I can point right here. On the shelf, around this collar, around this edge, I like the epoxy to get there, and it kind of holds it in place. But you put a little epoxy on there, Get that outer diameter to match the inner diameter of that hole, and you have yourself a DAS connection system. I could actually put it on there right now loose, and it would shoot just fine. But I don't want any play at all, and I don't want it obviously falling out in the field, so I'll want that secure. Oftentimes, it'll be a little bit snug. It's kind of a luck of the draw, and you have to tap that back in. That's no big deal at all. I just place this back over the, the same hole in the same piece of wood, and I'll tap it back in. You can see this bushing's got some marks on it. Where I've 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 tapped on it a few times. It's no no real big deal, but it's literally as simple as that. And then from there you have the connection system to to, to match up to the DOS plate. One thing that I failed to mention because I was just epoxying these in is I, I like to use the Max Impact uh, to epoxy that or regular Easton epoxy. In a jam, I have used just gel Loctite super glue uh, and not had any problems. But if I'm wanting something relatively uh, locked down and and permanent. I just use the same thing I use in, in a lot of my inserts, which is the the Max Impact. Even if you put that on, as long as you don't slob it all over the place, it still pops out relatively easy using the same process. I've epoxied them in before thinking, hey, this is going to be permanent. And I think it was a set of Uka BX I did it on. Them. Like I decided I wanted to sell them later. They popped right out. No damage, nothing, nothing to clean up. There was no problems. Put the stock ILF bushings back in and sent them on their way. Real fast before I... Um, before I end this video, I do want to show you how this connection system works with the with the limb in place. Here's the, the DOS connection system in in this particular limb. Let me move my coffee so I don't spill it. All right, let me show you how this connection system works uh, with the bushing in place. These are the Moac limbs that I've been tuning. You just saw me kind of push and seat that just like you would if you were using a, an ILF system. And and I and I know that the the groove the slot here is all the way up against my tiller bolt. That's really really important. And you can see that this screw will ride in there. And and then all I literally do is pull this thumb screw in. And I snug it up by hand. You don't have to really uh, wrench on it really hard. And it just sucks that limb butt down right into that rubber pad. And you get it finger tight, and you're good to go. And you can kind of you can see it's. Really not much different than the ILF on, on this side of the connection. It's really about what's riding here. Let me try to put this together so you can see how this ILF will seat versus the DOS. Just push it on there, and you want to make sure that that tiller bolt, just like in the DOS, is seated all the way up against that groove. And I always look underneath here for the back of it to ensure that it is. And, of course, you would string this up, and you would pop it to make sure that that detent is in place, but you can see, you see how that detent travels, that detent pin travels down that channel and snaps right into place. And you've got a quick connection system there that's safe, reliable, and very, very, very convenient. Hopefully this uh, opens up some opportunities for you to try different things and it adds value.